Right, so I've logged into my other user, which has access to the server, and I've copied across the IDRSA pub public key file. Uh, and what we're going to do is, as I said, add the contents of that public key file into the authorized keys file on the server. Now, in your case, you may just need to log into the server as normal with the username and password. So let's just log into the server. I'm now logged in and I need to now add this to my authorized keys file. Now if you haven't set this up before on the server you may not have an authorized key uh, an authorized keys file so you may need to create it. So you just need to uh, I'm just going to issue the command touch dot ssh slash authorized keys with a z um, I'd spell it with an s but it is with a z it must be with a z uh, and what that's going to do is if the file doesn't exist it will just create a blank file and if the file doesn't exist it won't do anything uh, that's going to break anything. Uh, so obviously in your case if you issue that command touch dot ssh slash authorized underscore keys that's going to create that file for you. If you get an error message about not having a dot ssh directory you should have one but uh, you can go ahead and create that directory first. Um, so one, uh, in my case I ha this file already exists in your case we've now created that file so now I just need to edit it. Now you can edit it with whatever editor you want. I'm just going to open it up in Vim. I'm just going to say uh, vim.ssh authorized keys. Now you'll notice here, as I said, I have already set up several keys to be authorized to log in to this system. And these are the public, these are the public key identifiers for each one of those key pairs, which is why I don't have a problem with showing you the the actual data from these keys in the screencast because they're the public key. It's fine. In fact, it's encouraged that you share your public key because then people can give you access to stuff. So, in again, uh, if you if you're first time setting this up on the server, your file will be blank, and all you need to do is paste the contents of the public key file you got uh, you generated into the authorized keys file. So I'm going to open up the IDRSA pub file that I made on the local system here. Uh, it doesn't want to open it up in anything specific. Let me just override that. There we go. I'll open it up in text edit. It should open fine in any text editor. Here we go. And as you can see, it looks the same format as the other keys. I just need to take this line, copy it, and I'm just going to paste it at the bottom of the authorized keys file. In your case, you'll just need to take the contents of IDRSA pub, copy that, and paste it into the authorized key file. It could be the it could, you know it will be the only line in that file, but that's fine. Uh, now I'm just going to save and quit the authorized keys file. And what that should have done now is it should have set that key up. So that's an authorized key, and if I go back to my other user, I should now be able to log into the server, and it should work. So let's try that out now. A quick stop press moment. We, we will go over to the other user in just a moment. Um, you do need to make sure that on the server, the uh, .ssh file has the correct permissions set. It needs to be set so that the permissions are read-write for the user and no other permissions granted. So you just need to make sure that, that those permissions are right. Now I believe that's going to be uh, permissions mode 600. So you may need to just say chmod uh, 600.ssh authorized keys. And let me just verify, yes that's correct. So you need to run chmod 600 dot ssh authorized keys just to make sure the permissions are right if the permissions on the authorized keys file on the server aren't correct then this won't work so it, it has to be those permissions having said that let's go back over to the demo uh, the demo user and see if we can log in now right so we're back over here on the demo user I'll just clear out the uh, existing output of the terminal and we're just going to try and log into the server exactly as I did on my other user. So I should be able to just go SSH Peter at Dark Matter, Dark Matter being the name of the machine in this case. 
Uh, I'm going to get this warning because I haven't logged into the server yet on this user before, uh, but I'm confident that's correct. I say yes, and here we go. This is where the Mac OS X integration with uh, with SSH keys comes in. It's asking me here for the pass. It says password, but it's really asking me here for the passphrase that protects my private key that we set up earlier. Uh, so I, yes, I remember that passphrase. So you just need to enter your passphrase here. Now, if you choose "remember password in my keychain," the passphrase for your key pair very confusing terminology uh, but the password for your key pair will then be saved in the Mac OS 10 keychain and so when I type SSH Peter at Dark Matter in the future it will retrieve the passphrase from the keychain automatically do all the key uh, the key exchange for me and it will just log in straight away so if I uh, I'm gonna say yes remember that in the keychain say OK and that's interesting okay so uh, it did log me in but then it immediately closed the connection now I don't know why that is okay that was obviously just a temporary blip um, so let me just do that once more I just type in now that I've saved the passphrase in the OS 10 keychain I can go here SSH Peter at Dark Matter and it logs me in straight away doesn't ask me for the passphrase. All you know, the, the key exchange is happening in the background. And how do I know that this is using key authentication and not my password? Is because I actually have password authentication turned off on this server. So I know that this has now worked. So that's it. We have now set that up. Now there are several things that can go wrong. Oftentimes you do need to check that the permissions of the .ssh directory and the authorized keys file, as I mentioned in the stop press moment. Uh, you need to make sure those permissions are correct. There are specific values you must have for those permissions or SSH will refuse to behave properly for security reasons. Um, but that's generally, you know, that, that's generally uh, all you need to do is you need to create this key, copy it to the server, put it in authorized keys, and that's it. Now, um, if you were confident this was working properly, and you were confident that if something went wrong with your key, you could still log in, very important point, you can then turn off password authentication on the server if you choose, and you can have a very secure server in that respect. Um, one moment, uh, one thing I want to look at before I go, I just want to show that it stored the uh, SSH passphrase here in the keychain. Um, if I just open the keychain access here and you can see it's saved that passphrase in there so if you wanted it to forget the passphrase you could just delete this entry here in the keychain access but that's it we've now set up uh, Mac OS X as a client to log in to a server over SSH using public key authentication so there remains not much to be said other than thank you for watching this screencast you can find out more information about me and the stuff I do and the tutorials I do at peter.upfold.org.uk. Thank you and goodbye.